course, Mr. P. Chidamrav has indeed presented his eighth budget. What is the verdict from India Inc.? We've got some of the tallest captains to talk about it. Uh, I'm going to begin with you, Mr. Godrej. Uh, it's his eighth budget. Uh, it was a very anticipated, it was an exercise that everybody was looking forward to, including India Inc. At the end of it, uh, how do you feel? I think it was a, a very balanced uh, budget. Mm. I think the proposals are welcome. Uh, first, the fiscal deficit being contained is very important. 5.2% this year itself is a good number and 4.8% for next year I think is welcome. We must make sure we execute uh, it well. Uh, secondly, the expenditure pattern to my mind uh, proposed is good. It will be development oriented, inclusiveness oriented. If you look at some of the areas he has suggested, uh, they are very good. Uh, technology in agriculture, skills development. The incentives he has uh, provided for investments in the stock market, mutual funds, etc. will correct a tendency in the last two years for a large part of the savings of the country going into gold. Mm -hmm. I think that will help uh, current account deficit management also. So some of the problems of the economy economy has been well addressed. I think it will be growth oriented. Uh, towards the end of his speech, he did refer to the goods and services tax. I do hope he is able to implement that during the financial year because that itself could add tremendously to growth. You have been a huge advocate of GSTM. We will come back to you on that. But like Mr. Godrich said, he's tried to do a lot of little things to really add up to the macro picture. Do you think this budget, which is at least aimed to boost growth, will it achieve in doing that? See, whether it actually achieves in boosting growth depends on what all the ministries who are concerned with growth do. Mm -hmm. He can say that we, I need FDI to bridge the capital current account gap. But if all the ministries oppose FDI, or if the Congress party says, you know, no, 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 no FDI, or if Parliament doesn't pass FDI, what happens? Mm -hmm. Nothing, it can't happen. So that applies to a whole lot of areas. Growth, the states have to do things. If the states continue the way they are going and not concerned with the, the growth at all, but doing politics for the next elections, you won't get the growth. So the implementation of all these measures by not Mr. Chidambaram, mm -hmm. but by all the people concerned, including this investment ministry, because we have a 55,000 odd crores with disinvestment target in this. 40,000, yes. I thought 55. 40,000, anyway, yes, something. around that, yes. So, now to get that, it's, it's a very doable target, mm. but there has to be a political will to do it. Mm. So, you know, today to say whether it will happen or not happen is impossible. I, I believe what you're trying to say here, really here is that he's put the agenda for growth forward. Right. It is for everybody else to fall in line and, and, and take it and forward. He's provided the framework. He's provided the framework. He's given the direction in which he would like people sure. to go. But he can't make them go because he has no real uh, authority to make things happen that way. We're going to talk about his authority in a bit and I think that's going to be the political part of the debate. But let me ask you, 4.8% fiscal deficit target for next year, many people believe is doable because when he assumed office, the fisc was in a mess. He's managed to curtail at 5.2, which is laudable. Uh, and which is of course lower than his own target of 5.3 actually. 4.8, given our track record, we've missed it in the last three years, uh, four years actually. Uh, is that achievable? And should we also budget then for lower fiscal deficit thereafter? So I, yeah, I think 4.8% I would say is achievable because a lot of the hard measures to control fiscal deficit actually frankly have been taken. Uh, I think he has uh, he's learned the art of controlling expenditure with various ministries. I think the uh, fuel subsidy piece uh, is under control. The fertilizer prices globally have really come down. Ajay will know b better of that, but I would think that those subsidies could also be could also be lower. So I, I would say if there is growth, if there is GDP growth that is you know six percent plus, then I would say to achieve 4.8 percent fiscal deficit should be definitely possible. I think a lot more can be done on the disinvestment side of more than 40,000 crores. I mean, he started in one month, he did 20, 25,000 crores. Mm. So that also can be achieved. Uh, nothing got done on the telecom spectrum side. That also can be there. So, so I would say that should not be that should not be a problem. I, I, I want to touch upon revenues. You start from April itself. Yes. Not wait till the last quarter. Right. It requires political will. Yeah. The the decision that. But is there so much appetite for 40,000 crores worth of paper in the market? Oh yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So, but he did. Okay. He did twenty thousand crores. He did twenty thousand with, with, with two issues with actually, oil India yeah. and NTPC. Yeah. And, and I think investors globally trust him more than probably any other finance minister in the past. I mean, that's something that somebody said. I do not trust the government, but yes, I trust the finance minister. Yeah. So I think that 
is where the argument lies. Uh, Chris, I want to come back, come to you and talk about investments because that is really the big pie as far as the growth story is concerned. Uh, do you think this budget does enough to kickstart investment? And doesn't the focus then shift on investment versus productivity? Yes, investment has slowed down, but it is productivity that has actually collapsed. So if you look at... Uh you know, investment, the sentiment is very important and he has addressed it. He has uh, actually reiterated that um, on guard it will go into the income tax act. Second, he has talked about the Rankayachari committee report. Mm -hmm. He has looked at tax reform commission. Um, he has also clearly stated that, um, you know, they, they're going to invest in technology into the tax collection centers. He wants to streamline the whole process, make it simple. So in that sense, I believe that the sentiment part will be addressed. And he also talked about FDI versus FI clarity there he talked about measures to um, streamline that whole process of uh, investment and things like that again that will that will be very positive then he has created instruments on the infrastructure side and things like that he talked about insurance going to every nook and corner of the country so you know he has tried to address every one of them last must last but most important is he has said that the two percent csr can be directed to incubators that's right yes you know which will spur creation of uh, new enterprises will create you know look at innovation uh, he's talked about small and medium enterprises carrying their uh, credit to for two more years uh, I know the, the benefits are some small and medium enterprises for two more years so I think all of those when you combine I mean the investment credit sure. also yes I feel that uh, you know it addresses the issue of investment <laughs>
yield results not just in the short term but actually in the medium term also. We were just talking, sorry sir, you have no, a I would add a slightly discordant more concrete. <laughs> You know, India is a very difficult country to do business in. Mm -hmm. uh, our ranking His as speech seems to suggest he wants to make it an easier country to do business. Yeah, he, he wants to make it, yes. but how does he make it? Mm -hmm. And who are the people who have to take actions to make it? Mm -hmm. We are 132 in the ranking. True. What is it in the budget which lowers that 132 to let's say 32? Even this incubation, Chris, which he has talked about. There are a couple of approvals required before it can be classified. Why approvals are required, I'm not sure. So that, I think, that has to be required. implementation by other ministries so and at the state level. But that's the whole problem. Right. That in all these implementation, these uh, good intentions, the fine print kills it. You know, Raghuram Rajan said something very interesting yesterday when he released his economic survey on our channel. Uh, he said the problem with India is there's too much regulation. And he's not just talking about regulation that's enacted. He says there's way too much regulation which is actually not enacted and which should be and some things that need to be done away with. So I think that's, that's broadly the point that you're trying mm -hmm. to make. But Mr. Godrej, we are talking about growth. Six, six and a half percent is what everybody is talking about. Uh, the eco survey also says so it actually could be much higher if, if we get past that five percent mark this fiscal. Uh, I'm not going to ask you whether the budget does enough or not. We've discussed this. Uh, do you then believe that this six and a half percent is going to be possible without aggressive rate cuts by the RBI? And does the budget do enough to give Subaru the confidence to go ahead and cut rates? I think there must be aggressive rate cuts now. Mm. First, inflationary expectations are definitely coming down. Global commodity prices are coming down. Actually, inflation has abated uh, in India. Mm. I think this budget will also help contain inflation because once the, everybody knows that the fiscal deficit is being contained for many reasons inflation should come down. I think the Reserve Bank should take a major step in cutting the interest rates, I would suggest by 100 basis points. It would help growth, it would become a win-win situation and it will actually, a major rate cut will help bring down inflation because what happens is, if there is a major rate cut, everybody will expect GDP growth to be good, the rupee will appreciate, That's right. which will bring inflation down. So I think this is the time where a rate cut can actually bring inflation so down. The rate